Today we have Dr. John, who is one of the award winners in SCPM. Hi, I'm happy to be here. So today we want to quickly um, ask you some few questions about your career and how you've been able to achieve um, some milestones in, in your journey. So in less than five minutes or less, um, can you summarize your path to geosciences? Yeah, um, I, I got into the geosciences, I, I think initially because of my, my love of the outdoors. Uh, I entered into college as a freshman as a biology major. Um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And then I changed to chemistry, did that for another year. And, uh, and then some guys in my dormitory were taking geology. And at, at first I thought it was a big joke. And then the more I talked to them, the more I realized it actually sounds pretty great. So I, I took an intro course for non-majors and loved it. And I realized you get to do biology, chemistry, physics, math. And if you want to do field geology, you can do a lot of that outdoors. And, uh, and so off I went. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Um, very interesting. So, um, in your journey, your career, what were the most proud, uh, what were you most proud of in your career? I, I think the thing I'm, I'm most proud of is uh, the students that I've had a chance to work with um, every year during admissions. Uh, it's exciting to see who applies and then who eventually comes. And, and in your conversations with them, uh, discussions about projects that might be exciting for both of you. And uh, <clears throat> I, I enjoy that because it's always, it's always exciting. It's a little bit risky. It's kind of like an arranged marriage. Uh, you each choose each other on the basis of a, a very brief interaction. And then you're going to spend the next five or six years together. and honestly, as much or more in some cases as you do with your own family. So uh, it, it's it's very rewarding to then see your students go off and have their own successful careers doing a variety of different things, in my case. Yeah, that's pretty much a huge background. Good thing to be proud of. Um, have you encountered, encountered any challenges or setbacks that turned out to be to be a valuable experience. Yeah, I, I can think of of two yeah. things to share. Um, after I I graduated, um, I I didn't have many geology classes, and I was headed off to do a master's degree in geology at the University of Montana. But I got a a job as a summer intern uh, working with Paul Hoffman in the Geological Survey of Canada. And uh, Paul's a, a brilliant um, geoscientist and also very athletic. And, uh, and so when we got dropped off by a bush plane up in the middle of Northern Canada, uh, I felt very alone at first. I, I felt like I didn't know as much geology as the other students who were there from Queens, I might add, <laughs> and Memorial University in Newfoundland. Uh, and also, uh, we, it was very physical. There were, there were long days crossing lots of swamps with lots of mosquitoes. And, uh, I, I think after the first couple of weeks, if I had gone home, I might have, but we had no option. Uh, we had to wait till ice breakup was over, but after a month, I loved it. And I knew that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So. I, I think that that was a profoundly important experience in, in my life about persistence and perseverance. Uh, the, second, the second story is when I was a postdoctoral scholar at uh, Columbia, I was transitioning to becoming a research scientist and I needed to support myself on self money. 
and I would submit grants to NSF over and over and over again, and they would get rejected over and over and over again. And, and after a while, you, you learn the business of, of how to write a better proposal, and eventually it gets funded. And when it does, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Finally, you've arrived. Uh, but I, I, I think that it, it's always difficult in the beginning to get started. And that's another thing where you have to persevere. That's really amazing. That's amazing. And <laughs> uh, if you go back in time, is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I think that uh, if I look at the arc of my career, uh, I started out heavily in field geology and went through early career and mid-career. And then in my late uh, mid-career, I got involved with Mars, where all the, all the science comes to you on a computer screen uh, from some distal place in the solar system. And... Uh, and then eventually I was asked to be the chief scientist for the Curiosity rover mission. And I kind of disappeared for three or four years as we built the rover. And I realized in retrospect how fascinating engineering is. And, and, and the, the interesting thing about engineering, you know, when you do science in general and geology in particular, it's not like you really ever get the answer sheet. I think a lot of people would say, how do you know when the answer is right? How do you know when you've done a good job? It's like working on a jigsaw puzzle with all the edges and corners missing and you try to figure it out. And eventually you realize you're, you're getting it, the patterns are fitting. But with engineering, when you build a mechanism, you know if it works or not. <laughs> there's, there's no equivocation there. And the design is important and the manufacturing is important. And I realized that in, in this issue of work-life balance, there's also work-work balance. And there is being able to challenge yourself with new things to learn that, that keep, keep things fresh and exciting. And I realized that I really enjoyed the challenges of engineering, but I didn't have an engineering background. So if I could go back and do some things over again, I would, I would take some more engineering and applied math classes. <clears throat> That's that's really cool. I I noticed like some of the institutions now merge like sciences and engineering together too. Right. Um, as a daily schedule work-life balance, um, how do you manage your time and maintain work-life balance? <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to know that these days. Um, you know, I am I I've always had a pretty chaotic day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week and month-to-month -month schedule. Uh, when I was younger and had children, my wife and I would juggle. We figured it out somehow, and and I, but I have never been one to to worry too much about. And and I advise my the people that I work closely with to not worry about the the work life balance thing in terms of getting in at a certain time of day, leaving at a certain time of day. Uh, especially in academia, we have the luxury to figure this out, work overtime work less time and but I think the work life balance thing comes in at a at a career scale and and that is on a year to year to maybe even 5 to 10 year scale uh I, I think it's essential to be productive and creative as a scientist to find new challenges that that stretch you and take you in new directions you don't feel comfortable in the beginning but but after a while uh, that adds meaning to your life and eventually your career to accept these these different kinds of challenges and and then and then the business of being at home uh, and interacting with your growing family the kids you're taking to sports the kids you're taking to college the kids you're doing homework with when they're six years old uh, all, all that fits together very nicely because it it's nice to go to work. You, you enjoy going to work because you get a chance to, to do something new. So I, I find that the balance comes in at that scale, but somewhat longer scale. That's really amazing. Um, just a follow-up question. Um, what unexpected skills have you helped 
youth have, have helped you to be essential at your job, like something that you did not anticipate would be an asset? <laughs> um, I, I think that what I'd never anticipated was that I would spend so many years in my career in some form of administration uh, directly associated with science. Uh, when I got involved with the Curiosity rover mission, uh, I suddenly found myself not not just not just trying to figure out what we were going to do with the rover when we landed on Mars or how I was going to interact with the engineers in terms of building mechanisms and compromising the future of science where where you need to in order to to get to get to the launch pad but is in the interaction and management with large groups of people and i i never expected that i would do that i never took any formal courses in management i suddenly found myself in the middle of of management and uh and like anything else i i, I thought well you know let's just try to figure this out and uh I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. it what's, what's really important is the same reason I love working with my students. I, I feel very proud of them when they go off and do their own thing because I know it's their thing. And, and now I've become a department chair. I've been doing it for 10 years at Caltech. And I, I think the thing I enjoy the most is, is being able to help the younger scientists or even the senior faculty when they have uh, fresh ideas and, and need some help it's it's really wonderful to see them accomplish what their goals were and that and that you were able to help them so the management thing was unexpected for me really nice and the last follow-up question like are there days you don't want to go to work or do you always enjoy what you do <laughs> um I, I honestly don't think I've I've ever had a day where I didn't want to go to work um, because I was bored with my job or frustrated with my job. Uh, there were times when I might be bored or I might be frustrated, but it didn't didn't make me not want to go to work and and try to figure out how to how to change things and. Um, I like I say I, every five to ten years I wind up doing something new, and and I look forward to going to work to e explore new new things. So when we get done this, for example, today I'm going off to visit some colleagues in engineering who are holding a a carbon capture and sequestration workshop, and and I will sit there in the audience and and be stimulated by it. Well, that's really wonderful. I get to know. Um, in the future of geoscience society, in your opinion, how uh, how has the geoscience field changed over the years, and how do you see the geoscience and research evolving in the coming years? Uh, on one hand, it's changed a lot. On on the other hand, I I think there's a lot of things that that stay the same. Uh, I think maybe one of the oldest traditions of, of the earth sciences is, is geological mapping. I think it's important to remember that a map is not a set of facts, it is an interpretation. And, and the interpretation may have a very high degree of confidence in, in some cases, in many cases, but where the terrain gets complicated, it might have a high degree of uncertainty. And, and so when we publish a map, uh, we may need to go back and do parts over it again. So in, in that sense, I, I think we always need to have those, those field skills. Now, those field skills have traditionally been applied in, in the context of, of resource exploitation and extraction. Uh, I, I, I think that's still a very important aspect of, of the earth sciences. Traditionally, it was oriented towards the oil and gas industry and the mining industry. At least in the U.S., there was kind of a nadir in the mining industry, not so much so in Canada. And, and the oil and gas can, continues to go on uh, with the development of new technologies. Uh, you know, the world is trying to, to undergo this, this necessary energy transition. 
but but we still need, unfortunately, for better or for worse, no matter how you think about it, we need those fossil fuels, and and to discover those those assets uh, begins with creativity in your mind about how to explore. And if you don't understand basic geology, you're not going to do a good job of of exploring. But the second point is mining is making a resurgence. Like I've I've found in our in our graduate student population. I think the last 10 or 15 years, almost nobody's known anything about mining. But now I get a lot of questions from students about how can I go find lithium? <laughs> Everybody wants to help with the energy transition. We need copper, we need zinc. And, uh, and so I, I see excitement to, to go look for various types of metals because people realize that, that a battery begins with extraction of materials from the earth. So that stuff is all the same. What's different is, uh, is the urgency by which our society uh, feels the need to engage with an environmental remediation, protection of the planet, protection of the environment. And, and there we, we see the growing need for engineering because you can understand a process, you can understand atmospheric dynamics, you can understand aquatic chemistry, um, but now you have to apply this to understand how you can clean up an area that's been contaminated or how you can prevent uh, or deal with adaptation in an area where, where ice will melt and it's not just sea level rise, but it could also cause flooding. It could change the distribution of groundwater resources. So as soon as you say the word applied, it means you need to know more about engineering. And it's not about sending rovers to Mars, it's about how to, to make the planet a better place to live. So I, I see that as the, as the big change. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, the next follow-up question is, do you think that geoscience, geoscientists are doing a good job at outreach to non-geoscientists? Uh, what can we do better? Um, we can always improve our, our outreach. I, I think when it comes to uh, space science, NASA does a, a terrific job. Um, they have always uh, been outstanding at, um, uh, uh, at, at encouraging the scientists they fund to engage with the public. And this is critically important uh, because uh, we live in an era where science as a whole is being questioned in terms of its value, uh, in terms of its purposes and needs, but yet though that kind of exciting science, be it planetary science or understanding rocks and minerals or understanding the lunar eclipse, uh, there are aspects of Earth science that are very important for stimulating kids in grade school and middle school to go on into STEM education, to go into high school and be excited about science and engineering. And the country needs it, the world needs it. Uh, and and I, I think that you have to steer the hearts of kids that are in sixth, seventh and eighth grade. That's the, that's the critical turning point. And I, I think, it, I, I don't think you can overinvest in that at this moment in time. Yeah, and the uh, last follow-up questions. Um, with challenges in securing job opportunities, why should one consider a career in geosciences today? Uh, yeah, well, that's uh, that's a that's sort of the critical question of the of the day. Um, you know, not everybody wants to be a professor or or can become a professor. Uh, not everybody wants to work in, in the oil and gas industry. Not everybody wants to work in the mining industry. Not everybody wants to do environmental remediation. Uh, there are all these options out there, but I, I think the most important thing uh, that I could say about this is that you have to do what you love and love what you do and don't promise more than you can deliver. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. John, for your time. I really appreciate and uh, this is um, all the questions we have for now. Great. Thank you, Anne. It was uh, nice. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. Thank you.